pot, whatever. So we went out pretty much uh, every single night, went out hard. And then I went to Chicago for a wedding on Saturday and I just got back home yesterday. So I am, uh, my immune system is very, very low at this point. <laughs> you took it to the limits. Yeah, that's a... Uh, so feeling a little rough there, Kenny? A little bit. That's what I actually took like, uh, like three hours worth of naps today, but still. <laughs> still not doing it for you? Yeah, well, we'll see. I, uh... We only been drinking, you know. You don't have much choice when you go to like uh, to Los Angeles. At least most of the bars we went to, we didn't go to like a lot of good whiskey bars. But like pretty much anywhere you go, it's always bullet bullets everywhere. Yeah. And then uh, just makers at the wedding and stuff like that. So pretty much. Yeah, what, uh, was it work slash wedding? I was following on Snapchat. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. <clears throat> so work was in L.A. and then there was a wedding in Chicago. So. Okay. Okay. Yep. Different locations. Gotcha. I think this is the first um, bourbon roundtable and coming in like stone sober, not a sip of anything to drink today because I was like, well, I don't want to drink other stuff if we're going to do blind tastings and everything. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, now I kind of wish I had something to drink. I'm, I'm trying something. Have you, have, you guys, have you guys tried the new Early Times Bottled and Bond? Mm -mm. What do you think? I like it. I'll be honest. I'm surprised how good it is. Surprised um, how good it is. Is that yeah. a limited release or is it? Um, hey, Michael, how's it going, man? Hey, Kenny, how are you? Good. Hi, you hey, Blake. Um, just, I'm just excited to be on the show tonight, and just you know, just looking forward to it. All. Well, we're excited to have it. I mean, uh, anybody who offers yeah. a drink whiskey, it, it, bring them on. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate your contributions. That was, uh, <laughs> that was yeah, it's all right. Well, I, I just hope it doesn't disappoint. My no, I, think I, I did. Uh, I'm, I may have already. Was there my favorite? Yeah, were we supposed to do a full tasting and re review before? No, no, we're I've already done it. Like, okay. You have? Is that Ryan? Or I'm just kidding. That? Yeah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's what say. What I the video tonight, Ryan? Why is it not videoing? I don't know. Turn your camera. In. Uh, camera not detected. How's that possible? <laughs> It's inside the laptop. Well, just drop, <laughs> just drop and reset whatever you have, and then come back on. Although I, uh, I bought a new camera last time. I don't know if I wasn't using it, and, but then I just put it. I'm like, man, I think I need to go back to the grainy image of myself. This is a little more high def than I think I want to be. <laughs> <laughs> I think the viewers need to see it. Uh, I mean, it truly is HD. I remember when I was watching the last roundtable. It was just like. Whoa! It was yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was stupid Prime Day. It gets me every time. I'm like, oh yeah, absolutely. I need that. Uh, oh, I, trust me. I know. I know. Got the camera, the Yeti mic, uh, and I think some other thing. I'm just like, what? Which I guess I do use these at least once a month. So a lot of times, twice a month. So I consider that a wise purchase. See, I think so too. Now, Michael, you're based out in New York, right? Yeah, I'm, um, I work in the city, but I live out in Brooklyn. Nice. Yeah, so um, it's it's different. I mean, it's you know trying to find bottles here is a, a bit of a yeah. tale of two cities. Completely uh, different than most of the country, I would assume. Yeah, um, I although mean, I remember a few years back, people would still be pulling really good bottles from like random places, and I forget. I forget oh, that's names. it's it's not it's not to say occasionally you can't find a diamond in a rough at Aster yeah. or like one that you'll just walk in, but I mean, when you do find a bottle, the I mean. I saw a bottle of Elmer T. Lee the other day for two ninety nine. <laughs> what well, a the steal. bad thing is, there's probably. <laughs> yeah, I'll sell you one for thirty dollars cheaper. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know, right? But they but, probably won't but, sit on the shelf for that long. No, they won't. they won't. They um, won't. They won't because because you know because some of these stores are based on like the financial area. Yeah. And then and you know so you get like a stockbroker that just has no not even a second thought laying down his Amex card for like eight hundred bucks yeah. for uh you know. You know, uh, a season wood. Well, or twelve or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that that's the uh, the frustrating part about um, all that is. It's like, okay, yes, we are getting more stuff because it's New York, but at the same time, everything's overpriced. Yeah, I'm just like that. Um, New York's one of the the seven cities that's getting Kentucky Owl. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I've, my hunt's already started. I've already spoken to every store owner I know. 
and was just like, you know, it's, I've been even telling people about it. It's like, contact Empire, try to get a bottle. <laughs> and and, and a, a, a friend of mine owns a bar, and he's owned a bar for over 30 years, and for the first time ever, like, he texted me, he's like, he's like, I can't believe this just happened in all my years. He literally had to sign, fill out a form, just to get a raffle to get a Kentucky out in the bar. From the distributor, from the for, yeah, from from his from his distributor, Jeez. like he's never ever had to do that before. He never had to fill out a form just to enter a raffle in order to get a bottle. That's that's and and, and and we're talking someone who gets like the antique collection every year, Pappy, you know, and like I, it's not it's know, not like know, you. Uh, which I wondered how that because I mean I forget what the number was, but. There was only like three thousand bottles, I think, of the batch seven. Um, so I was surprised they took it national. So, yeah. Twenty-five thirty-five is what 25, it is. Twenty-five thirty-five. Yeah. Yeah. Now I'm surprised they did decide to take that at national. I guess get everyone's feet wet a little bit, and then maybe batch eight will be a little bigger. I saw it. It was pretty funny. So Dixon's actually speaking at the Louisville Bourbon Society tonight. And uh, and somebody said like, oh, he's killing it on stage, and then somebody responded, "Is money just falling out of his pockets or something?" <laughs> <laughs> Which Dixon's a good guy, I like him. Uh, I feel like he takes most of all he's that. Nice guy. Try. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I feel like I just get so frustrated if you, you know you, you're successful, but people hate you for the success, or not everyone, but some people get mad at him for the success. I'm like, what? Why should he be upset about the success? <laughs> Isn't that the goal of every whiskey brand is to become really popular where way more people want it than you have? But uh. No, it really is. I actually didn't even get a chance to get an owl this time. It's I was gone all last week and it was released, so there went my chances. What's up, Kerry? What's up? Hey, what up Kerry? hey, Kerry, how are you? Good. How are you, Michael? I'm doing well. Good. So, so what? So, Kenny, was that Kentucky owl gone in a day? Uh, it was all released last week, and then Liquor Barn held theirs for the morning release on Saturday. And I, I mean, I'll be honest, guys, like this was uh, it was surprising because I told my parents, I was like, I'll just get there at like 8 45, like, well, plenty. I mean, last year when Owls were released, like it was on the same yeah, day, there's a ton of them. It, was on the, it was on the same day as well, or 12, like they just couldn't get rid of them. I was just like, you could just go anywhere and pick them up. I mean, people were passing on them because you know, 200 bucks, whatever. And then the hype train just gotten so bad or maybe so big with them, whatever it is. And I mean, I think most of the liquor barns only got like less than 15 or 20 a piece. Like mm. when they used to have like hundreds, right? Really? Yeah. Which I guess, man, maybe, maybe they did put a lot more to the other states because it was, I know Florida's getting some because um, I think it's supposed to be releasing this week. I think what was there seven states that all seven yeah seven states. <laughs> yeah, all right, nine o'clock. Kenny, what happened with the four roses? Why did why did they only have like 150 bottles? There we go. Oh, it wasn't even. I wasn't there, right? So I wasn't there for it. But I mean, I I saw all the chatter. Yeah. But it yeah, was there's like the, 58 the or something. Release? I mean, I would have gone to Cox's Creek because that's close to me, and it was. Yeah. And that's what I got a buddy in Bardstown. And I said, hey, you know, like just go around like 10. You know, they'll be That's fine. Like, there'll be plenty. Because, like, where the Al Youngs were released, I mean, they had they had, they had, they had enough bottles for two days' worth of sales, right? Mm -hmm. And now yeah. they only had, like, 58 bottles at one location, 150 at the other, 200-plus people in line at, at each location. So there was a lot of butthurt people out there. Yeah, <laughs> last year, there was, like, 50 cases in this retail shop. And that's what I told my dad. I was like, because I couldn't I was like, just go around 10 or 11. You'll be fine. <laughs> And then buddies were like leaving at eight thirty in the morning because only what a hundred and some got sold. Or yeah, um, I put the chat to the link uh, or the chat. Jesus Christ, the link to the chat in our group chat. Did you all get that, or do I need to re put it in there? Uh, I think I see it. Put it in there again. Can you guys hear me? Okay, we sure can. Nick. Yes, sir. I'm having uh, audio, video, audio problems tonight. I don't know what's going on. We're but, taking uh, over for Blake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, last time that was me, dude. Yeah, I was going to say, hold on. That was like three times ago. I, I was a disaster, it. man. Yeah. I had horrible perception I'm just and my. One of kids just scream in the background. <laughs> hey, Blake, uh, you nervous this weekend? The streak ending? I feel like I ask this every year. 
But, Kentucky. Well, uh, you know yeah. when your when your quarterback's only completion is a hail mary bomb at the end of the game, I'd say yes. I am nervous. What are we at? Twenty six, <laughs> twenty seven years now. Where, where's this? Thirty. Thirty years. Is it that much? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's thirty last year. Who's willing to bet? Who's willing? Thirtieth time's a charm. We can do this. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take the spread. I've, I've learned yeah, to yeah. never bet on the cats. Ever. No, oh, man. Well, no. you haven't been watching much Florida football then this year, I'm sure, because uh, oh. I may would bet. <laughs> Although I think I had that conversation with somebody last year, and then Florida actually did play pretty well in that game. I just want y'all to know I'm very sweaty from Cycle Bar. I'm still covered in sweat. I'm here <laughs> what is for Cycle all. Bar. Yeah, Cycle Bar is awesome. It's a like cycling class. It's pretty fun. Oh, I thought it was like pure bar meets cycling. No, yeah. It would be cool. Yeah, like pedal uh, while you're holding. A, we a do plank. cycle bar and then we do uh, sushi and sake. So it's a good night. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice combination. Keep it up with locales too, right? Yeah. All right, cool. So uh, right, make sure everybody everybody's got their samples in front of them, and then I'll go ahead and get this kicked off, and then we'll just pour as we go. Um, for anybody that's in the chat, if you feel free to uh, just kind of tell us what you're drinking on tonight, we'll uh, we might try to integrate it at some point. But other than that, uh, we'll get it kicked off and rolling. Cool, fellas. Sounds like a plan. Sounds good. good. Yep. Really cool. <laughs> really cool. <laughs> really cool. What a dick. All right. <laughs> Are y'all drinking all of these samples? Like, I feel like I'm gonna get hammered. Yeah, we're making this too, right? <laughs> yeah, you don't see it all on the same. Yeah, you have to drink the whole thing. Yeah. What's the rule, Michael? Do we have to finish? <laughs> Michael, no, that's, no, no that, right. that's completely your, your call. Whether you want to finish it or save it for later, just in case there's something you really like. I think yeah, it depends. There are a couple of these I, exactly. I really want to save for later. <laughs> I know I saw that. Did I see a, a Michter's Celebration Sour Mash on your Instagram feed? Oh, you recently? saw that? I did uh -oh. see that. Yeah. Um, I, I was lucky enough to win one. What? Oh, no kidding. Yeah, what? in a raffle. Wow. In a raffle. Wow. Is that sample D? It's um, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Are we trying to get any info? I will, I will say this, though. It, it, it did cross my mind, but it's not. <laughs> That's the next time, right? Let's do it. Yeah, he's got to. He's got to be on at least five times before he starts divvying that stuff out, right? <laughs> All right. Welcome back to an episode of the Bourbon Pursuit Podcast, the official podcast of Bourbon. Tonight is the twelfth edition of the Bourbon Community Roundtable. This is something that we do uh, once every three weeks. We host it on YouTube Live. We've got uh, almost fifty viewers on right now, and we've got a, a special episode. But uh, I want to. I want to introduce uh, first. You know, Kenny always here. Ryan is here as well. So Ryan, welcome back. Hey, happy uh, post Bourbon Fest week! You missed out. Bourbon I know. Blast. I'm so mad. I missed. I mean, yeah, I, I, uh, I was out of town. And I missed everything for Bourbon Fest. I missed the the damn Bourbon releases. So I just gotta just live and make do with what I can get by on uh just just good handshakes this <laughs> yeah, year. I guess so. Missed the handover yeah. that I've experienced three days now. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. So, uh, you know, this is going to be a fun episode because, you know, typically we we don't really do anything that regards of tasting, right? Because tastes are very subjective. However, we've had a yep. lot of people on the uh, that have always suggested shows and they're like, oh, like do a review of this bourbon or do talk about this bourbon. And, and we don't know what we're talking about. Like, <laughs> I don't taste marzipan and fancy <laughs> words when I drink bourbon. So that's yeah, why we don't yeah. It is tough. I mean, we we've not we're not typically like trained with our palates, right? We haven't we haven't taken like aroma sensory training and all this other kind of stuff, right? And and so we typically don't do it. However, one of our biggest fans of the show, uh, who we're going to introduce here in a second, uh, threw us this offer, and he said, "How about we do a, a a blind tasting on the round table, and we send four blind samples to everybody that's on them, and we're going to put everybody's palate to the test here." And uh, we'll see if we can guess it, see which one's better or worse. Uh, maybe maybe Mike will be the one that makes the rules here. So I want to first introduce our, our special guest tonight, which is uh, Michael Urado. And I'm going to make sure I'm saying your, your last name correctly first, right? You're actually saying proper. Um, in Italy, the I, the I is silent, so it's pronounced Urado. But here in the States, uh, you pronounce the I, so it's I Urado. So props to you. you got it. You're dead on. All right. I tried. Awesome. So, uh, Michael, I wanted to just uh, give you a second to... Let you introduce yourself to, uh, I guess, Bourbon Pursuit Nation out here. Yeah. Um, hey, guys. Um, I'm actually just one of you guys. I'm a longtime listener, big fan. 
sign in for every round table, uh, Patreon supporter for Bourbon Pursuit and as well as Breaking Bourbon. Um, I mean, just a, just, it was just one of those things where I was like listening to the podcast with Reed and Emerald and I was just like, Hey, that would be a fun idea. So I texted Kenny and, and here I am. So basically what I ended up doing was I sent every member, every, every person on the, on the cast tonight, um, four samples, um, didn't designate anything else but A, B, C, or D. Um, and that's basically what we're, you know, just have some fun. I got to, I got to also, great idea, man. That was awesome. Yeah, I got to also preface this because Blake was a little worried at first because he was like, well, who is this person? Is he going to be sending us like uh, you know, stuff mixed with like oil or uh, anything like that? Do they want to kill us? Any for okay, anybody anybody Michael, I'm like, okay, skin. I know Michael. We're good to go. <laughs> yeah, serial killer. It's like, guys, it's like, you know, going to a potluck. It's like the I don't know that person, I'm not eating the food. I don't know what their uh, <laughs> kitchen situation is. <laughs> leave to find out you know it was michael so we're all good <laughs> yeah well I, I appreciate it and uh, and super psyched so thank you well cool so thank let's you. go let's go thank around you. the horn and uh, have every blogger kind of introduce themselves where you blog at and uh we'll, we'll kind of get this thing kicked off so blake you go first he always blake. goes first <laughs> What's so special about Carrie? Because he's on the left side order. of my screen, so it's just he's <laughs> going this logical order. Put him in purpose on the left side so you can stare at him longer. Yeah, yeah. It's I have you got your singer, Carrie. You'd be fine. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Blake. From Bourboner.com. You can find me at Bourboner.com backslash blog, uh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Just you can search B O U R B O N R. Uh, how do you pronounce that? Bourboner. Sure. It never gets old. It's the silent. <laughs> it's the silent e. It's <laughs> kind of like the I and Michael's exactly. E. <laughs> uh, never gets old. It doesn't. All right, Carrie, you go. Carrie from uh, suburbia. Um, I used to blog. I took a break, but I'm coming back tomorrow. Big article tomorrow. You're not going to want to miss it. Uh, S u b o u r b i a dot com. And I'm also on Twitter, uh, usually pretty salty with my tweets, but it's entertaining if you follow. <laughs> and uh, then you'll find me here like every three weeks because I feel like it's every day. Kenny reminds us we got another one. Yeah, it's like Cycle <laughs> Bar. <laughs> <laughs> Lined up. All right, Nick, you go. All right, I'm Nick from Breaking Bourbon. Uh, find us online at breakingbourbon.com. Uh, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Uh, you know, we do a lot of things. We do the release calendar. We do reviews, articles, things like that. But at the end of the day, the three of us guys, were just, I mean, we're just like all of you guys here. We just like bourbon. We drink it all the time. And, you know, it's become kind of like our lifestyle. So that's kind of transitioned. That transitioned into BreakingBourbon.com. And that's now transitioned into, you know, this kind of thing. And basically talking about bourbon 24-7. So Professional drunks. Exactly. Else. All right, Brian. All right, guys. Uh, yeah, Brian Harris, sipping corn. Uh, great to be on the show again. Uh, you can find me mostly on Twitter at sipping corn and just a little bit on Facebook lately, but uh, mostly Twitter and uh, Google blog sipping corn. I write about uh, legal history and and uh, those sorts of things, along with some tasting notes. So I'm really excited about this, uh, Michael. Appreciate you doing this. Oh no, no, please. I'm super psyched. So. Cool. So, I mean, I, I got to say, I think, Brian, I think the, real pressure is on tonight. the real pressure is on tonight for, for Nick and Brian and Blake because you guys give tasty <laughs> reviews, you guys give notes all the time. So, this is, this is your all time. I will, I, will, I, I will preface this. I did tell Kenny that I wasn't going to throw any curveballs. There's no like craft, there's no like Jay Henry or Kings County. I mean, it's stuff that everyone pretty his palate has probably tried. Many times before, so and it's and it's um, all bourbon, um, no no rye, no, no rye, um, no rye, no rye, okay. no rye. It's all about all nervous. Surprise, they're all rye. The <laughs> <laughs> and no one can tell. <laughs> so uh, also before we start this, you know, there was a, there's one thing that Blake always says, uh, and you had it, and I think it was one of your last articles was, you know, it's a, I mean, I think you used the word like taste blind like 75 times in one sentence. So kind of, uh, kind of give us your theory on, on why you always want to taste blind. Yeah, because it just removes everything, all the marketing, all the gimmicks, all the, you know, what you've read online, what people pay, price, it just removes everything. So you're tasting 
purely on whether or not you like it. And I can't tell you how many times I've been surprised. I guarantee you we'll get to the end of this show and all of us will be like, geez, I've actually rated that pretty highly and I didn't like it or vice versa. You know, I've said I didn't like it and I kind of like it in this blind tasting. There's just always surprises. Um, and it just helps for buying because there's no point of spending $150 on some limited edition release when you tasted it blind and you didn't like it, you know? So um, it, it's just the best way to do reviews, tastings, to, and to truly figure out what you like and don't like. Okay, well, let's pour, cognitive let's, pour, biases. Yeah, let's pour our first sample real quick, and then we'll, uh, we'll keep the discussion going here. So, so everybody pour sample A into their, uh, their, their glass of choice. I got a Glen Karen. I don't know if anybody's drinking out of anything different. Uh, I got a plastic cup. <laughs> <laughs> Is that like a hotel plastic cup? That's not really bad. So, <laughs> yeah, bring you anywhere. And I have no cycle bar cups. Anywhere, so we're going classy. I get heavy marzipan. <laughs> don't say marzipan. This is a, an interesting what thing. marzipan tastes like. It smells like bourbon. It's the almond <laughs> sugar or something, right? Or almond. Yeah, I think I think actually marzipan was like some like like it's almond cream something. I found it in Fresh Market one day. See, there you go. Like I right. got a lot of vanilla. Yeah, I say it's this is I don't know. It's a little funky to me. It's uh, I don't know. What, what do you guys think? It. What kind of notes I are you get getting? Some out of this? vanilla, a little bit of spice, and there's definitely some caramel. And I, I was kind of. The first sip was like leaning to more into like a Heaven Hill taste, but it, I think it's too, I think it has too much sweetness for that. Oh, it's but very there's sweet. A lot of butterscotch on the yeah. nose. It is, a, yeah, sweet nose, sweet, very sweet, sweet taste. Probably around like a ninety proof, something nice. like that. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. It almost reminds me of. Uh, I, I just had Michael's, just had Michael's video stream popped up on mine to try to see if anything I said. He gives a tell. It's like playing poker. It's, <laughs> <laughs> His poker face is all too good. Yeah, I'm getting that vanilla caramel. You know, a little bit of oak on the nose. It does taste about 90 proof. Definitely tastes under 100. Jeff uh, Jeff Pearson yeah, wants think, us also to guess the age. So if you can guess maybe a po possible age date yeah. on it. I like that. I put six that to eight. Probably ninety proof, about eight years. And uh, and Kerry is also drinking but, a plastic cup, so he's probably gonna have some BPA floating around in his. <laughs> go a little higher than ninety. I it's one of those. Maybe a week. Just based on the sweetness, but I'm just not getting the. It's very of sweet. Spice. It's young though. I can yeah, tell. Yeah, very young and sweet. Age has been but a tough thing it, though. I've been, if it were weed, it would taste. Yeah, you I just taste get, like, the young golden a lot sooner. But it's I actually it's some that don't always taste young or old, and then they are. Yeah, they're the, the opposite. Golden raisin and kind of yeah. That's actually pretty good. Not bad. Yeah, I like old it. Charter, old charter eight year. <laughs> Is that you what you're I, going with? Something like that. You think you think it's a Buffalo Trace? You think that's where it's where it's originating from? I'm right, that's what I'm leaning towards. Because I kind of smell it. Buffalo Trace's white. You know, you can almost smell their mash bill sometimes. See, I'd say maybe, maybe Special Reserve or Antique. If I had to, it's not twelve. I can't. I don't think it's antique no. at all. No, I don't. Yeah, I think it's probably antique. One of those other right? So it's gonna burn a little bit more. No, antique is. I think antique's a lot sweeter, in my opinion. Yeah, antique's gonna yeah. be stronger than that. I don't have special reserve that often. I'm, yeah, I'm not going weeded on this one. I'll I'll no. I'll be an outlier now. I feel like I'm that's a good call. Like this could be WSR. I think it's WSR too. Now that you say it, <laughs> not of a cognitive biases. <laughs> I, I I've I've proclaimed it many times in the podcast before. Is that I do not understand the hype of WSR because I always think it tasted horrible. And if this is what WSR is, then. I don't know. Maybe I eat. Then you're gonna buy a bottle. <laughs> <laughs> you know, is it good enough to be Blanton's? I think that's my question. I'm. I haven't been yeah. drinking Blanton's a lot lately. I get much of like it's really orange, so get orange peel and more of that than. Um, you see how clear it's it is. Too sweet to be a Blanton's. <laughs> yeah, it's very. The color is very light. Chris Chris Haynes said he said if you enjoy it. Cup, Chris Haynes said if you enjoy it, it's not special reserve. 
<laughs> just by default. Yeah, I agree. If it is special reserve, I'd be surprised. But I mean, I'm not the. I don't know. I'm, I'm not. I'm not overly overwhelmed by it. But yeah, I think it's pretty good. But I'd put it in the you know uh, a daily right. drinker category. Can we get a, Michael, can we get a hint at any of any sort? Like maybe an age range. Um. It's, it's interesting. This particular bottle, um, the age is a little, a bit of a mystery. Um, I thought it was about eight to nine years, but when I did some research on it, um, I saw some places where I even said it was like 18. Oh, hmm. really? Yeah, so I mean, I don't know how accurate that is, but it's, um, you know. Hmm. It's, no, not it's, an, oh. <laughs> it's definitely not special reserve, but. Yeah. So it's an orphan barrel. It's got a blend. <laughs> Which, that's where, um, yeah, it's blood oath. <laughs> gifted pony. It's yeah. Gifted pony, right? <laughs> See. All right. So let's let's do this. Let's let's put on a rank scale of one to ten. Like, where would you guys put this in your rank scale? Six. Yeah, seven. Yeah, I'd say yeah, it, I'd say five, right yeah, in that is, range. It's five growing six. on me. It's growing on me. But it, it'd be interested to know, like. Our ratings might change once we know what it is. Oh, uh, that, and that's why we're taking. Why we do it blind? <laughs> well, and also the first one always. I think when you your first taste of bourbon is like you know you kind of like open things up a little bit. Yeah. And so I bet yeah. if we came back to it later, it tastes a little bit different. Oh, definitely will. Yeah, comparison is always always makes a big difference. I think I like something more or less than I do. I'll taste it against something yeah. relative to that, and suddenly I like it a lot more or a lot less, relatively speaking. And your yeah, it's not, it's not like so it changes things. Is this? Yeah. Does will it? Well, no. Yeah, I don't um, think this um, is wild turkey or anything like that. I mean, no, it's, it's definitely wild. it definitely has like a, kind of like falls apart towards the end for me. Um, it's See, something I'm that thinking it's like a buffalo trace milk. thing, but maybe not. I don't know. I don't get any buffalo trace mustiness. I'm not going. But I'm not going buffalo trace. Well, it's definitely not an old, out of date bourbon because you don't get that funk of like old wood with the older stuff. No, I get. I got a little bit of the leather, kind of that tobacco early, but not much of. I think it's just. Overwhelmed by sweetness is why you don't get much of the. Of that I don't know. So maybe when do we reveal it at the end? I mean, we can go after probably one after each one, right? Or yeah, makes the most sense. Or do you want to just reveal them all at the end? Go through them all and then no, no. The end. yeah, kind of, but kind of come back to them though. Sometimes you taste other ones and it, it hits you though when you come back. How about it. how about just tell us who who uh, distilled this? Um, as far as the distillery, want to know? Um, it is Heaven Hill. Ooh, yes. Lake. <laughs> Lake gets the checkbox on this one. Lake, way to go. <laughs> well, hold on, it broke up. What was it? Heaven Hill. Ooh. Could so it came off of that? Um, Larceny. Man. It doesn't taste like Larceny to me. No, I don't drink a lot of Larceny either. I don't so drink I much try... Larceny. It's not bad, I just... Don't yeah. have it I just had Larceny Saturday at UFL game, and it doesn't taste like – but I was kind of hammered. I mean, I don't know That's, what other Heaven Hills that are over – you know, that are, you know, put at, at 11 yes. or 8 or 9 years, but maybe 18. Like, you're not you're not in Elijah Craig category. You're not in um, – I mean – Maybe it will. Anybody remember Parker's Promise of Hope? Remember that? Love Parker's Promise of Hope. This is not Parker's Promise of Hope. Yeah. This is not no. Promise of Hope. That, that's probably the one bourbon that the first time I had it, it was instantaneous. Yeah. I knew I loved it. I mean, that's I remember so we, I were having a, we were having a tasting with a liquor store owner, and the first thing he said when he tasted it, it was the first time for him too, was, all right, I'm not selling any more of this. Took it all off the shelf and kept it all. <laughs> <laughs> Gar is Gilbert this like a, a current bottling? What? It, it's actually it, it's not like a pre-fire or anything. It's like a current like. Oh, is, I, I, yeah, is it a current bottling? Should I? It's kind of. That's yeah, going to start away. giving it away, isn't it? Yeah. 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 So are we revealing at the end of each sample, or are we waiting till the end? 
I think Michael makes the rules here. Yep, Michael makes all the rules. <laughs> yeah. I, I just say we just reveal it one after the other. That way it's kind of yeah. like, you know, and then it you can like go a, back. This way you can go back and be like, oh, okay. It's a 1995 like, Edwin Williams like single barrel. Gilbert Zamora said maybe David Nicholson because it's a recent brand that's kind of come out. But All right. Should I reveal? I think it's time. Let's go ahead and reveal. All right. 1988. Oh, 88. 88. 88. 88. 88. Evan Williams. Wow. Nice. Well, uh, after so after really? I think what we what we asked there like seven questions after seven questions we started narrowing it down. So yeah. <laughs> that was a huge whiff by me. Yeah, I was I was actually surprised it didn't have that much funk to it. Um, but it's 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 I just love this bottle. It's a great great you know now that we keep drinking it, it's like it keeps getting better and better and better. And better. There's the there's the bias coming in. Yeah, <laughs> let's re rate Pre-fire. it. Pre fire. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so, uh, what are, they, what are they at age for age right now in those? Are they down to about eight to nine years? They're less. Yeah, they're, they're, about, they're about seven now, right? Oh, well, I thought that? they were still nine. I, I, that I thought they were still hanging in that. I eight see to nine 2009 all the time now. Yeah, they're eight to nine now. Um, you know, this mm -hmm. this one, I, I did some some search online, and a couple of places said it was eighteen year. It was like it really surprised me, but I'm like, the, the color is too light to be eighteen, in my opinion. But I don't know. Maybe they, was it a special release or anything like that, or a single barrel pick, or is it just off the shelf? No, it's um. Well, it's it's it, it was to Japan. Okay, interesting. And so, what's the proof of that, Michael? Um, eighty six point six. Okay. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So you guys, you guys were definitely dead on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we knew it was lower proof. Yeah. Pat ourselves on the back on that. Everything else, we feel miserable. <laughs> yeah. I feel like a, dumb a hard ass. one though. It's not like we did bourbon. Not like that's an easy one to pick. That like, just had a lot of sweetness for Evan Williams. I know. Girl, I feel like, which I guess they're they are all different, but obviously, but hmm. in the eighties, interesting. I think I'm going right. to hold on to the rest of the sample for a little while now. No. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say though, it, it doesn't taste that old at all. I I don't get. I mean, you get a little bit of oak, but. I don't, this it tastes is, real young. I didn't get really yeah. a chance to chime in, but you know when I was sniffing it, and it could be the allergies or me coming over a sickness, but it almost smelled like you know like dried bacon grease, and almost kind of had that kind of scent to it to me. But what? I know <laughs> the same. That's the McDonald's yeah. in your pores, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, pour sample B. And yeah, right, for hey, you. by the way, Michael, this this is the greatest round table I've ever been a part of. We <laughs> 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 do this every week. Because yeah. whenever we're no, not I'm doing cool blind tasting, we can at least sound like we know what we talk, we're talking about. Now that yeah, we do blind you, tasting, this is awesome. just, yeah. <laughs> nobody's going to trust your reviews ever again. I know. <laughs> I, oh, um, hey, Kenny, I did think of a, a cool idea. Like, so when this is all over, if you want to do um, another question and answer, um, if you guys come up with a really tough question, I'll send a, a sample of each to whoever wins. Oh, there we nice. go. Nice. Okay, I'm gonna. We're gonna do games, yeah, because I'm gonna give away some samples too. Yeah. <laughs> so it'll be at the oh, okay. end. Yeah. Yeah. So I stick around. I'll give away one of these shirts as well. <laughs> uh oh. Yeah, I got. I got a question in mind. Immediately, it smells like cotton candy. See, this is this is really good to me, and well, I shouldn't have said cotton that already. Candy. Bias. It's totally cotton candy. Okay, so while we're uh, while we're sniffing here and drinking, uh, Brian, I want to uh, ask you a question. So, you know, how often do you taste blind versus, you know, just coming down to your, you know, your uh, your basement or wherever you have all your bottles stored and just pouring something yeah. out or um, anything like that? Well, I, it's 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 tough to drink blind, I guess, unless you've got uh, someone pouring them for you. Um, now, I've had a I've done a lot of blind samples, sort of like this, not. Uh, not ready for public humiliation on screen at the same time, but uh, but get samples blind and then then uh, with, with several people getting them and then you all try to compare notes and do those sorts of things. Uh, but most of the time when I'm reviewing, it's either from a sample or a purchase I just made. So I'd, I'd like to do more blind on those reviews. The beast on getting those most I, I know what most of them are. I but love this. this, is, this I agree with Blake. This is the way to do it. Yeah. This is, I mean, this is sample like, me of uh, Kenny. Some of the barrel picks. I don't, I can't believe I remember it, but the barrel picks that we did at Wild Turkey 
with uh, Reed and them. This does, see, I was thinking like a big fruity OESK or something. I was thinking OES, I was thinking OESQ. I, oddly enough, I was thinking Four Roses at the same exact time. Yeah. Um, because only because of yeah, the proof, like it, it feels like you're around 110, maybe mm -hmm. uh, 115. That's a Q or yeah. an F. It's got some. It's got some spice at the end that really hangs it with does. you on the finish. Yeah, it's it's, it's a, a peach. Cobbler. I'm thinking four roses too, mm -hmm. and I'd go with the B mash bill because I get a lot of rye on this. OBSQ. I, I will say it's delicious. I really like this bottle. It's very yeah, good. It's awesome. Yeah. OB either OBSF or OBSQ is the recipe. Well, now I gotta look at my recipes. It's a nine-year, eight-month recipe. I'll say not. <laughs> I will say like this, this is also somebody else that mentioned to us. Maybe we'll do it for another roundtable. Somebody said that we should do a, a blind tasting with all the ten samples of four roses and kind of going through them. But I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. Here's the problem, and we've done that before. There is still some variation between the bottom yeah. barrels themselves to where. Yeah. One OESK may not taste anything like another OESK. I agree. Yeah, because I uh, friends of mine in the Orlando Whiskey Society, they picked, um, ah, shoot, it was, I think it was an OBSV, but it was just like no OBS, no Four Roses I've ever tasted before. Yeah. And that's where they're like, yeah, this thing just stood out. We were just automatically like, yeah, let's taste that. Because you do get a lot of that, which is crazy to think that, you know, the warehouse location plays that big of a difference. Or it could just be the oak and you know, part of the tree that was made for those barrels. But I actually just uh, pulled uh, by uh, granite four roses. Yeah, I saw that cheater. I just I, I had to pull uh, one of the hang tags off my four roses over here so I could figure out like look through all the uh, the <laughs> uh, the recipes again to figure out you know kind of where I could where I could put this because unlike you all, I haven't memorized them all so. Remember, I'm the Whatever I'm the host. Is, I don't have good. to be smart. I invite the smart people along. <laughs> that is totally yeah. a, Q, a Q yeast. Oh, it's not Q. Uh, I, no. you know, I don't get Q because no. I get much more. F I'm sticking with either K or V, but maybe OESV. I would agree with that's probably B over E. Yep, but. Watch it not even be four roses. Watch it. <laughs> I'm thinking more like, it's gonna be it's gonna be a Russell's. I'm yeah. thinking either OBSF or OESF because I definitely get like a mint to it. I don't know about you all, but there's some menthol in there, yeah. I've gotten much more though <clears throat> from Mid four Ports roses. In there. <laughs> all right, I'm, hey, I'm putting oh, my final guess at nine four roses, nine years OBSV. I'm gonna. Yeah. It's gonna be crazy. We're gonna go through all this, and it's not gonna be fucking four roses. <laughs> it, I hope yeah. so. I mean, this is like this is old. This is uh, this is at least twelve years old. I mean, this is older than I think uh, than I think we're talking about. It tastes like it has more age than the uh, than the previous one than the other yeah. ones. Oh, it definitely yeah. does. It's but... definitely stronger too. Like there's definitely more proof there. Yeah, it's 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 in that above 100, 110, maybe maybe a little higher than that. So some. Michael, uh, let's start narrowing it down a little bit. Um, are we, we, we're all mostly in agreement on four roses. Are we dead wrong? Should we start over? Actually, all done. <laughs> <laughs> we did it. B, no. B yeast, though. So go ahead. Let's, let's see the bottle and the recipe. I think it's time for the reveal. Yeah, B mash All right. Bill. All right. Um, basically, so it's a four roses, private select, right? But just wait for it. It's Bourbonner release two. Oh, <laughs> there you go. Nice. It's, a, it's a Bourbonner pick and it's OBSK. Oh, OBSK. Nice. There we go. Nice. Dang it. I knew I should have stuck with my first one. <laughs> so that is not, that's what I'm saying. This OBSK tastes nothing. So Four Roses OBSKs to me do have the cotton candy smell, which is what I smelled initially. But the taste is so much, um, there's so much more pepper than I'm used to with a K recipe, with the, the K yeast, like that's surprising to me. What's the uh, age Blake, on this, Michael? Um, ten years, right, Blake? Ten years. Yeah, I think it's um, ten years. So this that yeah, was ten years. 
I was between two high barrels. ride, high ride, thirty five percent. I was between two barrels, and a buddy of mine was like, "You have to select this barrel. It's way better than the one you are going to select." And I ended up being able to get both of them, and he was right. This one was way better than the pretty good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Blake. It's I, I really when I opened, when I first opened this bottle, I was like. This is one of the best private selects I've had. Me and Michael really are there. actually in on this. The secondary value of that bottle just skyrocketed. <laughs> <laughs> I got bunkers My, of them. I know. Just kidding. There's no collusion. Well, I didn't know. If, if that was the case, it's a misstep on my part. So it's almost done. It's opened. Well, we all figured out the four roses, but I was way off on the yeast. I thought that was a Q or a F. That was definitely spicy. I fucked it up completely. This it's is a great to tell, though. Yeah, I'd say this is one of the better Four Roses picks I've had. I, I, I agree. I, I, I totally agree. I totally agree. Yeah, quotes yeah, going on my next uh, bourbon secondary yes. post. Quit blowing up Blake to you. Let's not give Blake some caps in the back, okay? <laughs> right. the, like, the worst Four Roses of... <laughs> <laughs> Granted, I was given five samples, and this was one of two I picked, so it's kind of like shooting fish in a bucket at that point. You know? <laughs> it's like yellow label. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and start pouring sample C. And while we're pouring this and sniffing, uh, I'll ask a question over to Nick. So at the at the very beginning, uh, Blake had mentioned, you know, you know, we're it's the nature of the beast is right now with um, you know limited edition releases that you have to, you know, basically people want to you want to try it before you buy it, right? However, with limited editions, you necessarily don't get that option because it's you have the opportunity to buy it now or it's gone forever. So what's the, uh, what's the, what's your take on that? Like, is there any way to kind of get around that or is it just kind of like, well, buy it, sample it out and then sell it. Like, what's your idea? Share with friends. <laughs> Sharing is caring. It's that, I mean, you know, I, I guess you, you know, you can't buy necessarily everything. I, mean, I guess it depends on your budget. Maybe some people can buy everything, but definitely sharing can ease that. You know, if that, that's what we do. I mean, we share just about everything between the three of us. Um, you know, when we buy a lot of limited release stuff, there's been years when we've bought way more than we probably should have. And that just ends up being more for friends and family, you know. So I guess sharing is caring, right? So sometimes you can get that thing that you're not sure you don't buy it. Well, you might be able to find somebody else who has that other thing you want, right? So buy it if you can get it sometimes trade it, do whatever you got to do, you know, to kind of get those things in your bunker that you want to have. Um, you know, but don't go crazy. Eric wrote that article a little while back about uh, kind of a different view changes perspective. And I got to say, I agree with a lot of that where I guess we've gotten to the point where we don't go too crazy trying to buy and find everything because it does get to be a little overwhelming. And there is a lot of stuff out there that's just, I don't think it's really as good as it, it could be, you know, it's not as good as it's made out to be. It's just everyone playing in on the limited release, you know, stuff going on right now. In fairness, though, who actually decides to pass up a limited edition, a really limited edition bourbon because they tried it and didn't really like it? I mean, who who actually would say, oh, you know what, I didn't, I didn't think the Eagle Rare 17 was that great this year. I'm going to pass it up. Or gotta buy it. even if you buy that. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, I tried the Four Roses LE. I don't think the 2016 is that good. Are you going to tell your store that has called to offer you one that you're going to pass on it? No. Hell no. You're going to buy it anyway. I, I think these days nobody buys the bottle based on taste. They buy the bottle based on hype, based on, uh, per, you know, rarity of the bottle, being able to flip it later for something else. Like, that's what has ruined the whole hobby is that it's not about taste anymore. It's about the bottle itself. It's about the you know, the fear of missing out, the FOMO of missing out on a limited release that, that, I mean, truthfully, last year, every limited release sucked. 2016 yeah. was the worst year for limited releases. But yet we all stockpiled yeah. what we could because we weren't going to not stockpile it, you know? And that's the sad part of the whole thing is it's so little to do with taste these days. It's a great answer, Gary. Yeah. Thank you. Well, very insightful. Thank you. Uh, Are we sniffing three? Y'all heard of... Have y'all heard of a distillery called Filibuster? I have. I yes, have. you guys have a yeah. nice tea, right? It's not a distillery, is it? Or whatever. I don't know. At the Whiskey Pig, Delilah's, that's some a filibuster finished at Sherry Cask. Holy cow. That was some of the best juice I've had in a while. Hmm. I, really I know that taste on three. I know what that is, but I can't 
place it. I mean, I'm getting like a lot of like pepper and cherry on the on the nose here. Yeah, cherry bomb. We like like a almost like a um, national distillers kind of nose. No, it's not that old because it doesn't have that funk. Mm -mm. Yeah, no funk, but it's this is really good though. Yeah, yeah, this is nice. Yeah, yeah, the sweet bomb. fruit and like and some like spice. I'm, I'm gonna put this one towards the Buffalo Trace category. But not Buffalo Trace. I'm just saying, like from the distillery, possibly. Mm, I catch like an old granddad kind of thing. Yeah, that's that's. You're, you're saying mean, not the model. No, I had about though, right? thirty pours of old granddad at Whiskey Pig, and I'm not getting it. Carrie, Carrie, you saying modern beam old granddad or? No, like national? maybe a maybe even a, a national distiller's old granddad, but like a '91. See, that's yeah. Mm -mm. I don't. I don't, I don't get that. I don't get. I don't get that. Hey, we need, a little we bit need of fun a lot. Place. Like when they were transitioning from the good to the bad, like they poured a little bit of the good and a little bit of the bad together and like made a batch. See, I don't get much of like that mineraliness that you usually do get from the uh, the national distiller, but it's just that sweet. You usually get like the Werther bombs with national distiller. It's another low proofer, though, right? Yeah, I'm thinking under 100 for sure. Yeah, definitely under 100. I think it's, yeah, you're probably right. It's probably around 90 to 100, somewhere around there. I like it a lot, whatever it is. It's really good. I like it. Yeah. It's, it's got some really spice nice. at the end. I'd, I'd say pushing above 90. The Carrie, finish on this is Carrie, awesome. Carrie, you're on mute. Carrie, unmute yourself. A tirade, and he's on mute. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, all right. Cool. I silenced you because of the dogs barking. Oh, stop it. <laughs> Am I choppy? Mm -hmm. No, you're good. No, you're good. good. This, no, this, I, think I think it's, I think it's the cable on the mic. If I move the mic the wrong way, it's it's cutting in and out on me. Well, well, that, we that was a for just a minute. Y'all know, y'all know what tomorrow is, right? What's yeah, tomorrow? Yeah, BTAC press Tuesday. release. BTAC press release. This is oh, a wow. for all of our oh, followers. With BTAC. <laughs> yeah. BTAC. Yeah. That, yeah. That, that overpriced. Oh, BTAC. Okay. Yeah, Wait, yeah. who okay, says I'm who says BTAC and who says BTAC? BTAC. Uh, I, say just easy. It I, is say, I say B tech. I say but B tech. B tech is easier to say. I it say it's not going to get it. I'd actually never heard it called B tech until Bourbon Pursuit started calling it B tech. <laughs> <laughs> Trendsetter, motherfucker. That's right. Really? Because I read it on the Bourbonar Facebook group like every day. So. The Bourbonar <laughs> Facebook group? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get back to, All right, back yeah, to, let's get back to this one. <laughs> Wait, I, did, I have one thing to say real quick. So, um, in uh, in the Atlanta Bourbon Group today, somebody posted a link and said, "If you don't follow this person on Twitter, you're an idiot." And it was uh, Breaking Bourbon, Mr. Nick there. Wow. Ooh. And I responded, "You're all idiots anyway, even if you follow him." <laughs> Any doubt. <laughs> Real nice, Clark. But that's a that's a nice little shout out there. Where'd you see that? Uh, Atlanta Bourbon Society. Oh, nice. All right, so let's let's start narrowing this down. Like, where do you guys think it's from? I'm not even guessing anymore. I'm having trouble with this one. I re I really like it, but um, I'm having I'm trouble you know. placing it. Yeah, I, I will say this: it's like when I first had it, it was very unique. It was the finish is incredible yeah. on it. Very good, nice finish. It's got age on it. It does. But it's That's, not so. So I'm thinking barrel. So those things bring me to barrel proof. Uh, so this barrel, is bourbon. barrel proof. Barrel bourbon. It's not I think barrel, it's a barrel bourbon. bourbon. No. I, barrel bourbon batch bun. <laughs> <laughs> How much sake did Carrie have? <laughs> 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 all of it. Two large sake is like that big. And I, I sweated it all up, so it's all just sucking back in my system. It's sweet, yeah, it's, but this barrel bourbon for show. I, I don't know. I'd almost put it in like that twelve to fifteen year range because it just has some good spice and good mm. oakiness to it. But there's some rye in there too. I don't definitely some yeah. rye. I want whatever it is. I want a bottle. Yeah. How about this, William Heavenhill? 
It's a William Heaven Hill release. Which one though? Uh, I don't. I don't get. I don't. I haven't hit so. too many of those. No, I don't think anything was this cherry. In my opinion, I, I think with, well, based on the cherry food, and the it? taste, it's got to be something Buffalo Trace esque. That's. I'm thinking it's Buffalo, Buffalo Trace. Trace like no, I don't taste their mash bill. You don't. I don't taste I don't Buffalo. Taste. No, I don't. I, I mean, don't taste it, Buffalo Trace either. A lot of my like 107 picks that I have, at least the single barrel picks, like a lot of them have this over cherry like flavor. That's what it reminds me of. However, this doesn't strike me as like a weeded mash bill. So, no. See, and I don't, but I'm just doing the narrowing it out. It's not Brown Foreman. It's not Four Roses. Right. Doesn't have that Great. taste. It doesn't have a Heaven Hill taste. It's MGP. definitely not Beam. It doesn't have the the wet cardboard taste. It's uh, Basil Hayden. <laughs> it's, it's the dark rye. He got the dark no, rye. He got the dark rye and took the water out of it somehow. Pick. This is a Knob Creek pick, is what this is. Uh, Brett Williford said, Do you think it could possibly be? He said Kentucky Spirit, and I'm like, Well, maybe it could be Wild Turkey, like a Russell's pick or something. This but. is a Knob Creek pick. Is what this I, wouldn't be, I wouldn't be shocked with like some kind of Russell's Reserve or I think Smith and Homer Tilly. Yeah, you know, you mentioned something. No, this is an MGP. I can tell MGP. I think it's MGP. I've had some different tasting smooth ambler single barrel picks though, and I've loved a couple of them. All right, going back in for a little bit of a refill to get my final. Yeah, me too. I love this bottle, whatever it is. I think I emptied mine, so I'm. (laughs) I know. I'm I'm sticking with Knob Creek. This is my favorite so far. Boom. Knob Creek. Where it is. All right, so Carrie's Carrie's yes, locked in Knob Creek. Wait, 120 oh. proof though? You think that's 120 yeah, proof? No way. No, it's not 120. I think it's a. Uh, tastes like an old. I don't know. It reminds me of that 21 C pick or something, Kenny. <sighs> not to me. I gotta stick with you, no? Ryan. I think it's an old scout. I think it's an old scout single barrel. It definitely could be. Only because I feel like I can't pick it anywhere. So give me some I'm, I'm having a great time. I'm enjoying it. Yeah, I'm I've been way off. <laughs> oh, you're just sitting back watching us all squirm. That's it. This is the greatest thing ever. This is the best night of my life. I mean, I'm still, <laughs> I'm still thinking like it's closer to a, a Buffalo Trace, but I don't know if like it could be like a E.H. Taylor single barrel or something like that. I'm just not getting that. But I had E.H. Taylor I've been been it's, it's not hitting that for me. All right, well, let's let's call it because it's nine forty-five. So let's let's go. All right, Get, at least give us a hint. Should I, should right, I just I'm reveal it? Say Buffalo Trace. Um, all right, yeah, reveal it. <laughs> reveal it. <laughs> this was a tough one. This is a tough yeah, one. This is. It, it's a tough one because it, it's. I will say it's very unique. Um, e. H. Taylor. Uh, damn. Warehouse C Tornado Survivor. Ooh, Tornado. Oh, oh, wow. How much did I use wow. of this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was, I wasn't expecting anything that nice. That was a so, treat. Wow. Well, thank you for the sample. <laughs> that was the You're I think well, I, I got a little bit sure left. I think, I think I may have to pour it back in the. I know. <laughs> Let's save for I'm later. Looking at this, like, can I, can I fix this? Do I have a funnel that small? <laughs> okay, now, now let's say this: Is that bottle worth a thousand dollars? I mean, it's really good, no. but it's really um, good. I mean, it's I, amazing, but a thousand dollars? What's wrong with you people? I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, I like the max I'd probably go on it, which would probably have been like uh, four years ago, probably like three fifty. That's probably what yeah. the max I'd go on it. But but you all loved it, and Ryan was like, "This is the best yeah. one of the night so far." Yeah, I, it's, yeah. it's awesome. no. I mean, that's a, it, I, I I'm actually a little more part. disappointed with what it is because I'll know I'll never buy a bottle of it, <laughs> even though I loved it, it so much. I'm like, I can't, it wasn't life changing though. Like, I mean, we all were kind of like. It's well, what this, bourbon's life changing? Part of a blind taste is <laughs> that you really taste what's in that bottle. That's so fancy. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Right. Yep. But, right. So, so of the three so far, which one has been your favorite? Just out of curiosity, at this point, that one. Honestly, a that probably. One for me. The, you know, I, I like that, me. but I'm a I'm a sucker for the OBSK, and part yeah, of it I, was, I will uh, acknowledge is knowing that it's OBSK. I, I will admit that. But I mean, I I really like OBSK. Well, thank you for that. That was crazy. Yeah, much appreciated. That's great. So I got a I got a funny story about the the tornado survivor. So I was in 
Boston, uh, probably I think it was like 2013, 2014, something like that. And, uh, you know, at this point, Tornado is long gone off the shelves. But I go to this bar and I'm with uh, my, my team at the time for work. And we walk in and they got a, I don't know, probably about a, a third of the bottle of Tornado sitting there. And I look at some of my team members. I'm like, we're finishing this whole fucking bottle tonight. <laughs> and, and we did. We crushed the entire bottle. And it, it was like, I don't know, like $18 a pour or something like that. It was something stupid. So yeah. you think it tasted as good feel. now, yes. not knowing what it was? So it's 100 proof, correct? Yeah, it's 100 proof. And um, the age, they say it's like between 9 and 11. That's what, that's what I've been able to, to find out about it. I can taste like, like tornado. And it's, and it's, it's, I mean, it's bottled in bond. I mean, it, it, it's, it's bottled in bond. So I can taste like wind, like ripped off. Hell and hunt in it. <laughs> Don you could taste the sun beating down on the barrel. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just, just want to save the right? little bit that's left of my sample until after I get off so I can really enjoy it. <laughs> Well, that was good. Uh, so, Michael, that was an awesome one right there. Yeah, so let's great. go ahead uh, and pour sample D, which is our final sample for tonight. I don't want to leave C. No. <laughs> well, now I'm wondering what sample D could possibly be. Well, and D must be great because, Michael, <laughs> I, have, I have a half a pour, so D must be awesome, right? <laughs> well, it, it could be because that's all I had left also. Uh-oh. The last guy. The hype, is, the hype is real. D is very dark. Well, hype yeah, beast. Dark. I'll say I will say I'll give him to give myself some credit for that last one because I narrowed down BT and you I did, did. Say, you did Kenny Kenny, Kenny, did. Kenny Kenny was the only you one that stuck, stuck with it. You, you 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 were on to the E H Taylor. Yeah, way to toot your own horn. I was like I don't think it's single barrel, but yeah, I haven't hit E H Taylor in a while, but it 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 didn't strike me as the E H Taylor. Yeah, for whatever reason. Well, that's because it was it. sitting out in the sun. Yeah, you hadn't been that's... struck by a tornado yet. So I haven't asked a question yet about this before we, we move on. So, uh, you know, I guess uh, everybody's had a chance to do this. And so, Michael, I'll give you an opportunity to shine right here. So, uh, you know, we, we want to do blind samples, uh, you know, as much as we can to kind of do this. Uh, you know, do you have uh, uh, what's your process of doing blind sampling for yourself? Uh, do you sit there and, you know, pour some mystery bottles and hide them around the house and try to find them and go find them a post-it note and figure out exactly <laughs> what you had drank or something? <laughs> No, no. I mean, it's just like, um, you know, I have about 30, 30, 30 to 40 bottles open and it just really depends on my mood. And, um, you know, and when this idea came up, I really just wanted to keep it bourbon. Um, but at, like at the same time, keep it something within I, something I know that you guys have had, you know, like no, no curve balls and just something that um, at the same time, I think, you know, some, something that everyone would enjoy. Because you know, that's the whole point of this, isn't it? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jeremy Kendrick said, how many times do you think a tornado has ever been drank out of a solo cup? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's probably the, the first way. time ever. How many pours did Perry do? That's the question. Yeah. <laughs> this is a 24-year uh, Willet. You think? Yeah, this it's, is like one of those B or C barrels. Oh, it's barrel proof. Barrel proof. Yeah, it's, it's, it's barrel got proof the proof on it. Out of that great nose. It's barrel proof for sure. I mean, it is it is All dark. Right, look at my hard. plastic cup right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's you, definitely reminds me of a Willet for sure. It's got that corn, like a really low rye bourbon, nice and barrel proofish, but not like burn your mouth. Barrel proof though. Yeah, only it's not like I hit you in the face with like a one thirty. It, but maybe it's yeah. William Larue Weller. I can still taste no. it. Like yeah. it's still, no, like, it's, it's oh, still lingering. It's a will it, which means it's a Heaven Hill. You think it's a Heaven Hill? Hill? Every distillery except for Maker's Mark. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's a little bit darker than. Um, I think you could be right about Heaven Hill, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I just pulled out my my twenty four year thirty seven oh seven. I was going to see if I could sniff it out of the bottle and compare it. But <laughs> <laughs> What's the variation of Heaven Heaven Hill select stocks that are out there? All the, a lot of those select stocks are finished, though. So mm -hmm. you know, a lot of the cognac finish and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Are they all finished? 
I, no. Well, n not all of them, no. Not the 20 year But one. I feel like the, the 15 year, you know, the original William Heavenhill, like you can really taste the oak in that. And this doesn't have a lot of, whole lot of oak. This is good, it's though. Got, it's definitely it's a weeder. Really it's got the honey and caramel with the weeder that I always smell. So th it's definitely a weeder. I think it's William Rue Weller. Yeah. I, I, P22. Yeah, because I think it's like in a 120 proof range. I think it's yeah. W, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> I'll stick to a Heaven Hill uh, distilled Willet that's about uh, 14 years old, about 120 something proof. This tastes a lot better than some of the 14s I've had. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's... better than those than the uh, than the. Old Forester, well, it's this is this is a Heaven Hill. Yes, it's it's very nice. Barrel so thirteen ninety three, Michael. So you, so Ryan, you think it's a Willet? <laughs> I think it's Blake hasn't chimed in yet, though. I, I'm I'm agreeing with everyone that it's barrel proof. It's probably fifteen or so years. I just haven't had enough of the older Willets to really be able to say, yeah, that's that's an old Willet, but I, I mean, really I'm gonna say I think I agree more with Brian. It's one of the select stocks or I don't know, man, that's tough. It's really good. It's really it good is. though. Awesome. All yeah. right, so if we're gonna put it in the proof wise, I think it's like 120, like, 124. Yeah. Yeah, 120, 120, yeah. 121.3 is my exact <laughs> guess, Bob. Well, let's start there, Mark. Uh, Michael, what's the proof? Uh, 118. All right. 118. Yeah. Well done. Oh, no, I'm over. All right. Over. All right, so it's not William Rue Weller. <laughs> no. And, yeah, and confirm for Carrie that it's not uh, – not, uh, uh, well, uh, so before we do that, so Carrie, explain to people why it, it couldn't be William Lee Weller. Just, uh, just to be able to share <laughs> Explain to people okay. why you were wrong. In <laughs> well, teacher, the reason is I do not believe William Lee Weller has ever been under 124 proof. Actually, I'm actually, that's not. Um, in 2000, 2001, 2002, they put out a 19 year that was 90 proof. But okay. That's not it, but that's not it, though. Kenny, okay. I think Michael needs to take over for me. He's much more versed in bourbon than I am. <laughs> <laughs> we need to get some guests who actually know what they're talking about. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm not qualified. <laughs> but, but, but seriously, though, hasn't all of them been like really tasty? Oh, they're all yeah, incredible. Yeah. 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 Although I will say, Michael, I don't see you drinking over there. Maybe I missed it. Oh, no, no, I've, no, I've, oh, been, drinking. I've been, been drinking. I've been drinking. I've been drinking. All right, all right. I just, just haven't been commenting. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm so that is William Heavenhill then. Oh. That's William Heavenhill. I mean, I never, I never had the um, the good William green Heaven one, Hill William Heaven Hill, so I wouldn't know. Um, yeah, the, the the good green one was like 137 proof, and it yeah, I, I thought it was like 134. Like it, 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 it I mean, it, it was a, or something, yeah. doesn't it? To be 118, this taste, this age. Um, I'm not thinking of much else that would fit that category. So I, uh, I got an idea. I got an idea. So I know Michael lives in New York, and I had one of the we had a, a lineup of some really good Willets uh, a few weeks ago, and one of the top ones we had. We had a bunch of twenty plus years, and then we had this like outliers, like a twelve or fourteen year, but it was an Aster store pick. And I know since Aster's around there, it could be that. <laughs> what if this is like some, like this is Kentucky Owl? <laughs> <laughs> This is really this is really good, Michael. I think they've they've definitely they've progressed. They're all fantastic bourbons. Yeah, like like I, I yeah. try to progress each improve yeah. and then character and taste mm -hmm. and, and really just try to like like eat little by little, like layer upon layer upon layer. This one's my new like favorite. All right, yeah. so what is it? Tell us, tell us. Um, yeah, I think it's time to reveal. Time to reveal. Let's see that willow bottle. Well, I don't have like stock. I, I will say this though. I don't have the bottle, but um it's Kentucky Owl Batch Seven. Oh, no. <laughs> no way! I reached out, and I will say this: I reached out to Dixon, and I told him I was doing this. 
I was like, and he's like, he's like, but they, but they probably already have the samples. I'm like, even better. <laughs> <laughs> well done, sir. So, oh, so Dixon, so 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 big props to Dixon, and I can't thank him enough. I mean, that guy, that he is an absolute gentleman. But he, um, but he sent me out six samples that I could send to you guys. That's amazing. Um, and then, so that's it's that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. That's oh, really good. That was, that's hilarious. It's, Thanks, Deadman, for doing it's that. Really good. So. Oh. Oh, I, I, do, break it does, I had it right here the entire time. Where does Kentucky yeah. <laughs> Owl? Where does Kentucky Owl or uh, get their stuff from? It is all undisclosed. Yeah, okay. yeah. So, so they buy from someone in rebarrel the majority of their. But their, but uh, the fact that you all thought it was Willet, I'm like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Which I mean, it's it can be the same be source. Too far off. Um, yeah. But what's interesting is so there, it you know, it's technically a four grain bourbon because they have some a uh, weeded bourbons and some rye bourbons in there. But I would say I enjoyed this sample. I think a little bit more than whenever I tasted it, the sample that I I was sent when you knew it was. Which well, I didn't get it from them. What the hell. <laughs> they don't send to you. He was supposed to give it to you. <laughs> you got it one is, now, so quit making. Yeah, yeah, so that's true. Kerry, you got one now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, just do the, so yeah, the Michael, way. Michael, give Dixon my name. I mean, tell him <laughs> hook a brother up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I told him exactly who was going to partake in everything and everything and all that. So he's uh, he was awesome. You are a gentleman and a scholar, and we all owe you some samples from this. Yes. No, 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 not at all. Please, you, you guys, you guys, like, I listen. I mean, Kenny probably knows. Like, I'm like so, un like, I listen all the time, and I email Kenny all the time, and it's just like the fact that I'm even on this show has just been awesome. Well, you all are. Uh, we appreciate it. We're honored to have you, and I'm going to go back to some tornado right now. <laughs> I know. I, I I saved a little bit in my glass. All right. So who who was the favorite out of the one through four? Yeah. What, what were the favorites? We have four? to go back to see because. Uh, well, let's do this before we do it. Let's give a rundown of just a, a recap. So Michael, give a recap of what A through C or A through D was. Okay. So sa sample A was Evan Williams single barrel, nineteen eighty eight. Um, sample B was Four Roses, a Bourboner pick, release two. Um, sample C was um, E. H. Taylor Warehouse C Tornado Survivor, and Sample D was Kentucky Owl Batch Number Seven. It was a it was a good curveball right there. Yeah, that was, it was funny because who who has done the live review tastings? Like I did it. I know Blake's did it, right? But we couldn't <laughs> pick it out. So I well, know that that's what makes it even harder on me is I tasted this less than a month ago and didn't pick it out. But right. hey, you've had four bourbons before it, you know, so yeah. three yeah. bourbons. Before. That's the way blind taste goes. So, yeah. so I, I, I kind of get a question. When you guys are drinking at home or, you know, hanging out with friends, are you guys drinking one bourbon, drinking a lot of it, or are you just constantly trying different things what, what during one everybody? sitting? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a smorgasbord every time my buddies yeah. come over. Yeah. yeah. It's usually I'm drinking a lot of everything yeah. at Kenny's house mostly. I enjoy the smorgasbord because it's like, oh, well, have you tried this? Okay, well, get a little bit of this. You'll you'll like this. What's that? Quick reviews. So, oh, old Forrester? Forrester birthday. No, I haven't tried the Parker's the Heritage birthday. from this year. What are your thoughts, real quickly? Because they're going to drop any day now. Parker's was kind of disappointing for me. Really? really? Yeah, I, I, I really liked it. I really, yeah. really liked it. Yeah, well, I, I, maybe it'll open up more, but I just thought. I like barrel proof stuff, but I just thought the alcohol was too overpowering, and that. that, that I thought the Parker's and they really proofed that down. I, I kind of like the the whole marketing of uh, we just picked good bourbon this year. Yeah, it's one hundred and sixty dollars for that bottle, by the way. Yeah. But you know what? It's still it's still going all to the ALS fund, right? No profits. Yeah, like ten bucks. No, I don't know if that's the case, but it's one hundred and sixty bucks, and that changed my mind about the whole thing. Okay. Well, I mean, birthday can, uh, but can you blame it? I, I still think but, but the Parker's is a bourbon. single barrel, right? So, yeah, it is yeah. single barrel, yes. How many is. different barrels are there? That's a good question. Because, I mean, mine could have just not been one of the good ones. I don't know. Yeah. I've had a lot of I Promise of Hope single barrels, though, and they've all been pretty much identical to one another. Yeah. I, f I feel like the flavor profile is probably pretty, pretty close, yeah. at least yeah. from barrel to barrel. 
And what Kenny, was the, I'll let you try mine, but I just it just didn't do it for me. I don't know. Well, Carrie, what was the proof on the new Parkers? Um, this single barrel. Like 122 or something? Yeah, mine's 122. It actually didn't say on the bottle itself. Let me grab the... I mean, Promise to Hope is only 48%, right? So we're it's it's probably a big difference uh, in regards of, of the taste profile as well, you know, when you water it down that much. Yeah, you may, you may notice the difference is more being very... 122 proof is going to be Parker's Heritage. Yeah, and that's, and that's taking the proof down. Those, those barrels apparently were really high. Yeah. Um, I think that's pretty good. I just don't know if it's 160. It's not. It's definitely not. No. Good. It's good. It reminds me of like a just – I told Kenny it tastes like a Willet. Yeah. <laughs> they probably are the best name. <laughs> All right, so we've talked about PHC. What about birthday bourbon? I haven't had a chance to try it. I haven't had it yet. I probably won't. I feel like there's, this is the two camps of birthday bourbon. I like it a lot. I hate it more than anything else in the world. And it's like you very rarely find anyone in the middle. People who hate it say that there is a bitter taste that mm -hmm. they taste in every batch of I agree. birthday bourbon. And I don't taste that. I actually enjoy Old Forster birthday bourbon. I, I like it. A lot of my friends don't like it, and they say there's a bitter taste to it that they have every time. And it's the same thing with this year's batch, too. 2013 was the only batch that they like from Old Forester Birthday Bourbon, and apparently that was an accidental. Um, they found out during, during Whiskey Fest this year that it was an accidental batch in 2013. Um, I like this year's Birthday Bourbon. I've always liked them. What, I feel like I feel like this all? year's. I'm curious. Like there was a tornado that why we had a label on one, but what made this one accidental? I, I don't know. They they dumped the wrong stuff or something. That's on the 2013 was accidental. Yes, because that's actually one of the only ones I really like. <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing. That's the wild turkey that. story, right? Yeah. Like <laughs> Forgiven. Yes. Forgiven. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, but, but this, think, this year's Old Forester birthday bourbon was, I think it was more more central line than usual. I think it appeals more to the masses than previous ones, which are hit or miss, just like you're saying. You may love well, them or hate them. There's 21,000 bottles this year. I don't remember what last year's release was, but it's a big yeah. a big release. It's their biggest doing. ever for birthday bourbon. Yeah, I think it's the biggest ever that they've had. And so, I, I mean, I, I prefer it. I just, uh, yeah, it's a 12-year... Um, was it 94 percent 96 proof for you know the price goes up about five bucks every year so we're probably at about 90 bucks now retail um, and it's damn that bottle takes up so much space right you, you <laughs> store a bottle and you like all I think of is fat bottom girls by Queen like just <laughs> fat yeah. bottom bottles taking up space is the only thing that drives me crazy but I still like the taste of the of the birthday bourbon. Are you a Brown Foreman fan? Do you like Woodford Reserve? Do you like the other the other stuff? Whiskey. I, I, I don't care much for Woodford Reserve. No, um, I don't know the, what other products that they have. Old Forester Single Barrel. Like, yeah. this. I mean, the nineteen twenty has been my favorite. Yeah, nineteen twenty, eighteen ninety seven. Oh yeah, so the Statesman, row. the Old Forester Statesman. I went through a bottle in about a week. I love the Statesman. Whatever they did, wherever they age those bottles, I get it's only 95 proof. Wherever they age those bottles, it's awesome. It's a great, great release. It's gimmicky. You know, it's it's partnered with the movie, but it's only 55 bucks for the bottle, and it's a great bourbon. So I'm actually a big fan of the Statesman. Um, I'm just kind of torn on the birthday bourbon, and I feel like people fall either in the love it or hate it category for it. It's like Trump. But <laughs> you're going you're gonna to buy it no matter what, right? <laughs> exactly. If I give them the opportunity, I'll go buy three bottles. We don't get that here in upstate New York. Yeah. Never hits the shelves. All goes to New York City. Yeah, yeah. I, I found a 2016 in the store. Michael. Yeah, I found, anything. Michael, say, what did you think? I found a 2016 in the store last year. Um, I haven't, I mean, 2017, I, I mean, we'll see if I, if I could locate that. What did you think of the 16? Um, I, it's interesting. I've, ne I've never been a fan of the birthday bourbon stuff. Um, I mean, I've tried it. Um, like, like to me, the 1920s been the best thing that they've put out. Yeah. yeah. You know, it, it, it maybe because I don't know. It's just, that was just me. The 1920s Aaron was Barnes. a really good release. Um, I like Statesman a little bit better, even at lower proof. So the Statesman's pretty good? 
yeah, it is. It's just I don't know where they age those barrels, but it, it's got a really good flavor to it. Well, you think? I mean, how many barrels does Brown Foreman have sitting around? They have to have some really good stuff. It's kind of like put out a shit ton of them. Me and Kenny went there to like Cooperage. It was insane. Huh. Did y'all pick a barrel out? No, we just did the Cooperage tour where they okay. filled them all. Yeah, which is actually pretty cool. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah, I'm sure it's cool. Here, I'm gonna have a little bit right now, and then I'm gonna send the rest of this to whoever wins our asking contest. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> we'll uh, we'll start that after we wrap this up. So again, Michael, I want to say thank you for sending everybody samples. I think yes. uh, let's all yeah. give thank you, let's all give Michael a round of applause. So yeah, you're the man. Yeah, thank you. This was a great format. It was awesome, and um, love the samples that you sent. Thank you for taking the time. Like I, I can't even take time to send one person a sample pack. Yeah, me either. Five people. It, it so. is a big time commitment to pack them up. Um, it's it was easy to do at like three a.m. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't sleep, it was amazing. Yeah, you <laughs> just at three a.m. And and thanks again, Michael, for being a super fan. Uh, you know, it's uh, yeah, it was, much it appreciated. Yeah, definitely great to have you on the show and be a part of this. This, uh, this was this was really fun. Um, so one more time, uh, I want to let everybody kind of go around the horn and just talk about what you do and uh, you know. If you got anything and you do in your free time besides drink bourbon, Harry, <laughs> I like to cycle bar, and uh, I stay active. See that treadmill behind me? The physical activity activity allows me to um, drink uh, every night, so this is good. I, I keep my heart healthy. But uh, you can find me on Suburbia. That's s u b o u r b i a dot com, or on Twitter as Bourbon Bourbon. Exploring my words already. Thank you for that. Um, Saki, Saki, Saki. William Heaven Hill. Um, <laughs> <laughs> bourbon underscore gamer on Twitter and then I'm always on the bourbon R Facebook group trolling everybody in the group so you can find me <laughs> and you know if you didn't know like we had carry on as a single episode I forget how long ago it was but he had a pretty good segment of how he lost a lot of weight drinking bourbon so you know you just can't just drink bourbon to lose weight but you know his physical yeah. activity it really paid off so it was a good episode thanks <laughs> alright we'll go over to you Nick all right, I'm Nick from BreakingBourbon.com. Check us out online. And, uh, hey, support us on Patreon. You know, we really appreciate the support. We're working on a lot of cool things right now, uh, hopefully launching in the next, uh, you know, few months and, and beyond that. But uh, we appreciate the support. We appreciate our fans big time. And also follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook for kind of updates and things of that nature. So thank you for following Breaking Bourbon. I can tell you this, when that antique stuff comes out <laughs> on your site for that, because you do that graph that nobody else does that shows the number of right. Yeah, you, you earn money in the fall. I'm going to tell you something. So we have been watching and refreshing, waiting for that information to come out like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> we are lined up and ready to launch that information when it comes out. And it's late this year. It's really late this year. Yeah, but, uh, you know, they, it's always fun to see those, to see the letters. You know, the Buffalo Trace gives a lot of detail. i got to give them credit for that. It's really fun as a bourbon geek to kind of see that detail. Good. They're they're fantastic. You know, I know it's funny because they're like, oh, we're not really saying how many bottles there are. But, well, you told us the proof, the number of barrels, and the evaporation rate. So you really told us that already. So it's funny that they're kind of surprised that we know about how many bottles are created. Right. And in the bourbon world, <laughs> BTAC is, you know, as much as last year there was kind of some duds within it, you know, at the end of the day, BTAC is one of those that you, you really love. I mean, across the board, usually they're all pretty good, different expressions. So I think bourbon enthusiasts always love BTAC. Everybody's excited about it. You know, Pappy gets all the press, all that. But at the end of the day, you get the range, you get the kind of interesting flavor profiles with BTAC. So we're really excited about that yeah. coming out soon. So let's move over to the guy who has ruined BTAC hunting, uh, Blake, with the, with the release maps. <laughs> I ruined it before it was actually a big thing, so I just want to put that out there. We will be entering the fifth annual um, maps that everyone hates, which is the Pappy release map and the Buffalo Trace Antique map. Um, so look for those on bourbonner.com sometime this week. Once again, thank you, Michael, for doing this. It's been a lot of fun. Really enjoyed tasting blind. Uh, always a good time. So thank you for doing it. Yeah, I appreciate it.
just out of curiosity, like what are, what were your favorites of the four? I mean, I think we could all agree that Sample B is probably the best bourbon we've ever tried. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, honestly, I think the most surprising was, well, I mean, a lot of it was surprising, but Sample C, um, yeah, because I've tried I've tried that at bars before and thought eh, that's pretty good for the price. But I think Tasting Blind, I didn't give that as much credit, and I don't think I gave the Kentucky Owl Batch Seven as much credit. Yeah, I would agree on that. Yeah, yeah. The, the tornado. I've had it before too, and I was like, "Eh, it's okay." But tonight, yeah. I was like blown away by it. Which is the blind taste this kind of just more than it. more than the uh, sample D, Ryan. Yeah, I was thrown off by the D too. I mean, I thought that was for sure a really good will it pick, and uh, yeah. I haven't had the owl before, so or the seven at least. So, but that yeah. was really good. Also, C and D were close to for me. Like yeah. is my two favorites. Yeah, I I was D far and away, out out of all of them. Really, I mean, it was all uh, really good bourbon. There was no. Uh, yeah, I mean, no bad pick in the group. No, I just, no. Um, I, I think awesome. the I think the the tornado uh, survivor just had an overall good balance. It was proofed well. You know, I think the only thing that that the he, finish on it is. Yeah, and I think the only thing that the owl kind of had really was really lacking is is it was very hot. Kind of think compared to the rest of them, right? Um, so, I mean, that's, but that would be even typical of a even standard 14 year will it, right. That was just, yeah. uh, pretty typical of that, right. Where it just comes off pretty hot, high proof where I thought just, you know, with the, the tornado survivor, I just thought it just had, it had pretty much the whole package there. Yeah. If you set all those bottles down in front of me and I knew what they were, I probably would have picked a as my favorite. Cause I love heaven Hill and Evan Williams single barrels, but like doing it blind it, I'm surprised that I like the tornado the most. It would have been interesting to see what we thought had we not known as we went along. Yeah, that's yeah. that. That would be a good question. What we will, all would have picked had we not known, um, but then that would have you know given it away, I guess. But that would be interesting to see. We should have revealed it at the end. I, <laughs> I know, that was like, Michael, four more to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I guess I'm opening the celebration, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. But that is what's That's fun right. about doing it blind, though, right? Mm -hmm. All the everything comes down, right? You don't know what it is. Yeah. yeah. All right, Brian. All right, uh, Brian with uh, Sip and Corn. Check me out at Twitter at Sip and Corn, and and everybody who's still there, and you guys literally today on my book. So look for a book called Bourbon Justice. Uh oh. This, this uh -oh. time next year. Just in time for the Christmas awesome. uh, run. Dang. So if we need the Law and Order, dun dun. After that, great yeah, name, we need some Brian. Sound effects, Carrie. Carrie, you got some sound deal. effects for us. He's a, he's a pretty big deal. His his house smells like leather bound books. <laughs> <laughs> That's just all open. <laughs> I can just see the picture on the cover. It's like a gavel, like hitting a Glen Cairn or something like yeah. that. <laughs> I, might, I might be going for Lady Justice. I don't know what the cover is going to be. That's going to be exciting. Pretty good. All right, I have done some modeling in my in my uh, days. So if you need someone, I'll. Uh, you I'll could be Lady Justice for me. Glamour shot. <laughs> This isn't the Babies R Us catalog. Like, come on. This is like <laughs> the uh, Lulu, Lulu Lemon special. I got you. Yeah. You got it. All right. Well, uh, we'll All sign right. it off. Uh, Michael, if you have any closing statements for us. Um, no, just um, thanks for um, – taking part in this and I appreciate Kenny and for all he does and, and all you, cause it, it's, I, I visit all your sites regularly and, and as an, as an avid reader and, and drinker, um, I appreciate what you guys do. Um, and as far as for myself, I'm just uh, a fan of bourbon. I have my Instagram collection on, on Instagram at Flight of Bourbon. And that's about it. Cheers, my man. Awesome. Cheers, Cheers to Michael. Cheers. Awesome. Thank you. We yeah. appreciate it. Thank that was you. a great flight, Michael. That was a lot uh, of fun. Michael, you just proved to me and affirmed that I'm unqualified to be a host of this show. <laughs> <laughs> you can take over for me. <laughs> we'll let him do the spinoff. We'll, we'll do a yeah. New York edition or something like that. Yeah, exactly. There you go. <laughs> yeah, come out here. Come on out. <laughs> so We're with that. For giveaways? Oh, sorry. Yeah. We'll, we're gonna, we'll do that after we close out here. Yeah. So, uh, with that, I want to say thank you again for Michael coming on the show, supplying us with bourbon. Uh, letting us get drunk a little bit. 
Uh, everybody else on the table, thank you for joining us. Uh, it's always a great time to have everybody on here because, uh, you know, we said we do this every few weeks, every two, three weeks. So uh, it is fun. Um, but with that, make sure you catch us next time when we do this. It'll be another three weeks from now. So mark your calendars. We'll make sure that he's <laughs> pissed already. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll actually have it in the calendar already. I got to figure out the date. Uh, I don't have it in front of me. I know the date, but uh, I'll make sure that we put it out there so you can join us at that time. Uh, make sure you follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Bourbon Pursuit. Also support us on Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash Bourbon Pursuit. And uh, Ryan, close us out, man. Yeah, hopefully it doesn't conflict with uh, Cycle Bar class next time. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was awesome. Great idea, Michael. I mean, that was a killer episode. ton of fun. I hope we can do this again sometime. That was That was a blast. But uh, appreciate everybody listening. If you have show suggestions, you want to send us samples again and do this again, we'd love it. So uh, we'll see you next time. Awesome. All right, cool. <laughs> Gary's going to play us off. <laughs> I am the tiger. <laughs> All right, well, I wanted to have uh, I was trying to find uh, Be Humble. Sit down. It's a little. So it's- uh, Kendrick Lamar? I, I didn't. You didn't strike me as a Kendrick Lamar fan, Kerry. I'm impressed. That, that song is the bomb, dude. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, if somebody's gonna do giveaways, go for it. All right. Well, like, like I said, I put, like um. So I can only give away um samples A, B, and C because I don't have batch seven yet. Um, Dixon just sent me um the samples enough to send to you guys, but I, I will leave it up to you guys to come up with the question, a, a tough one for someone to get. Sample A, the Evan Williams 1988 single barrel. Sample B, the Four Roses bourboner pick. And sample C, which is the E.H. Taylor uh, Warehouse C Tornado Survivor. I will send each person a one-ounce sample. I I actually should have enough for sample D from my my sample that I got. So I'll toss that in as my contribution tonight as well. So you want to do four different questions or one question and winner gets all? How, how, I mean, I'll leave that up to you. What do you think? I think four questions. Okay. Well, that's a lot of, that's a lot of, but that's a lot of questions. Michael sit and send three different packages. So. Yeah, that's a lot of questions. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> just, just, just leave it up to Michael. <laughs> now, come up with a really tough question. Yeah, or really. Something tough. Like- hey, I'm going to I'm going to take a shower while y'all begin to get questions together, and I'll be back and give away. Do I, are we supposed to wait? Was that how <laughs> it Do I turn the camera off? <laughs> I'll be back. No, no. All right, so let's let's figure out a good question to ask. Um, do we want bourbon trivia? Do we want – well, you know what? I want bourbon justice to come up with a question. Yeah. Oh, I, mean, I, I gotta tell you, I don't, Brian. Brian. I love the name. I love that name, Brian. Yeah, yeah, it's a good. fantastic name. Actually, well, while I, you were talking, I just stole that URL, so you might. <laughs> <laughs> it's now for sale too. Twenty thousand for ten thousand dollars, but limited edition. Limited edition. That's right. I'm gonna do some limited edition books, and we'll see how those, those sell <laughs> yeah. in the secondary market. That's the way to do it. All right. Um, What's the question? Well, we got to figure that out. I don't. We yeah. Figure out the question. And we, we're not going to do anything like stupid, like you know, like it's too easy because that's these are these are epic samples, so we don't want to make it too easy, right? We got to we got to really right. test these people. It's funny because I I know people are going to start coming out of the woodwork. We got fifty six live viewers, but there's only been like five people that have been chatting the entire time. So, <laughs> so it'll be funny. Um, hmm. Yeah, you know, I, I I don't want to I don't want to put it out there because I kind of want I'm gonna put it in the chat first and then we'll uh, we'll go yeah, from let's there. Yeah, see what you got in the chat. Yeah, that's how we should clear this. Let's let's do that in the chat first. So we'll throw it through. We'll just throw a few different ones out there. You all can try to figure out, but it could also maybe be related to some of these samples or something. Yeah, yeah. How do we connect it? So are we doing one for all four, or is it? Yeah, because it's a uh, one hard one for all. Yeah, four. one hard one. Because yeah, we're not gonna make them ship out four different packages, man. That's a pain in the ass. So, mm-hmm. 
I think that second question has to be tough because I don't know it myself. Uh, oh, that's a good one. I like that. Yeah. Which one? On, where are you guys? I like the second yeah. one. Hold on. <laughs> so, uh, Ryan? Uh, on the top, on the top left of your screen, there's a uh, little okay. like chat button. We gotta let Michael pick, though, right? Yeah, we'll let. Uh, oh, we put the answers in here because we don't fucking know them ourselves. So. Yeah, I, 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 like, I, I, I don't know them. I, I like them. Um, yeah, Brian's Brian's yeah, one point. was really good, but I don't, I don't, I, I couldn't even answer that. Yeah, I have no idea either. So, so we turn this into a Google contest, or uh, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Who can Google, Google it the faster. quickest? <laughs> There's your answer. Oh wow! Okay. Oh okay. There yeah, I, I think that's pretty. Pretty. That's cool. a good one. I just learned something tonight, so thank you, Brian. Sure. All right. So Michael, <laughs> you can ask the question. question. All right. Um, so the question to receive uh, the four samples that were on tonight's show. Um, A, B, and C for myself, and Lake will send out sample D. Um, the question is, who was the first distiller at Heaven Hill? And go. <laughs> Big delay. They're all on Google right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> who can, can Google the it? fastest? Can I answer to get a sample? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thunder, Thunder, around. <laughs> Thunder it's chicken like says crap. Getting the almanac. Mm. Bobby, Bobby Sullivan. Sullivan. Close nope. to no cigar. <laughs> Jimmy Russell. <laughs> Not Jimmy Russell. <laughs> <laughs> ding, 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 ding. We got a winner. H Woodwork. Yep. Oh, we gotta, give, we gotta give a shout out to Nathan yeah. too. He actually sent me some barrel chips from our Russell's Reserve barrel. That hey, week. I used those this weekend. They were awesome. I smoked a pork belly with those. There you go. Here, here oh, they're, they're all good. rolling in now. So, so, <laughs> so MTH Woodworks is Nate, is Nathan. Oh yeah, it is. Okay. Yep. Okay. I've got his I got his contact info, but you guys can exchange contact info. You can find him on Instagram as well at MTH Woodworks. So okay. Uh, so, so Nathan, send me an email um, at either Icarus sixty five at Gmail or at, on my Instagram, which is Flight of Bourbon, um, and I'll, I'll get the three samples out to you this week. Yeah, it looks like everybody figured that out. They they all Googled it, and there's a lot of people that started rolling in with Joseph L. Beam. Nathan, send me an email at Blake at bourboner.com and I will uh or Instagram, whatever works. Uh I'll get the uh Kentucky Owl out to you. That's awesome. That's pretty cool stuff. Yeah. Right. So I just noticed I think Carrie was serious about the shower. I know. <laughs> I don't. I don't know how long he thinks we're going to be on here. So. <laughs> Although um, we could be here a while. I mean, I, I feel like last time we started doing the giveaways, everyone's like, "I'm going to give out this," <laughs> and then everyone disappeared. I was one of the listeners just waiting. <laughs> everyone was just gone. <laughs> I will say the only thing I have left is a little bit of sample D. Well, so that actually, tells you how much I enjoyed these samples. But, oh, but but also I will say this: so I was one of the winners in one of the the round tables, so I won a break in bourbon. Oh, hey. nice. so, so I did get it. Thank you. And we appreciate you you supporting us on Patreon yeah. too. So I'm gonna give away. Uh, and if everyone sees the shirt here, right? So breaking bourbon, little spoof on a popular. TV show. If you have Netflix, you can check Funny. it out if you haven't heard of it. TV show for copyright What's that show? Is that <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So, uh, kind of jump into the question. So, um, the uh, we had to kind of play with the lettering here to make this thing work for this shirt. So you got you got some uh, the periodic table elements. You got the atomic number. So in this shirt, there is. I don't know if you can see it here. But right here, there's the number 15. So the question is, what does that 15 mean? Why do we use 15 here? And I'll give you a hint, and that BO is not an element. Uh -huh. This is going to be tough. 
It's gonna be a lot of guessing. It is. I'm, I'm trying to think to myself. And, and then I will say, there's a question. There's a question that arises for Brian at the end of this that I I need to ask after doing a little research when we first kind of thought of this. <clears throat> so, what does the 15 stand for? How do I tie into it? Now I'm really. <laughs> this is a it's a whole kind of not not separate thing, but kind of led to it from looking. All right, so we've got a little bit. So Max Christie says BO for bourbon. So that's actually right. So the BO, because BO is not an element. It's, it doesn't exist on the periodic table anymore. So that is bourbon. That's where that kind of originates from. Rumor is, and I'm not a science buff, but apparently BO, you know, was boron and they changed to just B. So is that right? Is it well, over? we got well. So it's what is you got to know what the fifteen. What does the fifteen stand for, right? So that number is typically, as Thunder Chicken says, typically atomic weight, but that's not what it stands for here. Mm. So it's not the atomic weight. It was the year you were born. <laughs> I love, I love Chris Haynes' response. That's hilarious. Because <laughs> I love Tech Mobile. <laughs> <man. laughs> <laughs> I need, all right, if you want to out for the Florida Georgia for game this year, come meet me and Chris Haynes. We're going to have a nice tailgate set up. <laughs> what about Andy? Andy said it was 2015, like the year you guys were founded or something? That's not it. Hmm. That's a good, yeah, that's a good. That's what I, I would have guessed. I put it in the chat. I don't know if I'm right, though. It's not it. Damn it. So it's it's not because O is the 15th letter of the alphabet then. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you even come up with that? Like, you why didn't you just at least count, count it out before you count it off? <laughs> <laughs> I will tell you, after I had my first son, we, we memorized the alphabet backwards. I always remember seeing a video Whoa. on YouTube where somebody was pulled over. I think it was a spoof video. And they said the alphabet backwards, and the cop was like, wow, that's amazing. I've never seen anyone do that. <laughs> they would be cool to learn that. Why not learn the alphabet? All right, well, let's put you to the test. I'll put that backwards. Let's I, I think I've had too many for that at this point. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be next time, so tune in next time. Yeah. All right, we got a bunch of guesses here. So far, no one's got it. This is tough. I don't have time idea. for a hint. This is like blind sample tasting. You just keep... Yeah, you have no idea. You just guess. Yeah. By the way, you guys did great, though, honestly. Like, you know, like... I was I was impressed, much better than I would have done. I feel like I totally whiffed. If you had to rank, who would you say was the best out of all of this? <laughs> <laughs> Not counting somebody who picked one of the barrels. <laughs> I wish you guys could smell me right now. I'm so. Fucking <laughs> back. Is that a bird bath? <laughs> it's like smell a vision. Can you smell it? This is I'm so clean. Well, I, what about Andy drinks beer? Is that is that correct? Oh, I like Andy Drink Spears' guess, though. It's not correct, but I like the guess. Oh, I feel like that should be correct if it's it, not oh, I right. really like it. Yeah. I love that if guess. That's, yeah. If that's not true, I mean, what? I, like I, I will say it's again. it's more it's up the, the historical alley, right? So you're thinking more history. Okay. Urban was invented in 1915. Yep, nailed it. <laughs> 15 I want to ask years question. minimum aging. I want to give away. It is Aaron Stark. Aaron Stark, I know Aaron Stark. 1792, Kentucky became the 15th state to join the, the union. 15th wow. wow. There it is. Wow. Wow. Aaron, you killed Aaron. it. Aaron, Aaron, well done. Uh, that's that's tough, man. Wow. I didn't know that. Who says you'll you never use history? I like the guesses, though. You can play off that. So this leads, <laughs> to, so this leads to a question for Brian, right? So... What's funny about that is kind of curious if anyone's ever like played off of that for their branding. And ironically, I had to, I had to write it down to remember it because I've you know, never, never really seen it, never come across it. But old number 15 bourbon whiskey available in Australia. Really? And it's uh, 74 proof bourbon made in the United States, marketed as bourbon whiskey. How is wait, that possible? How wait, is that can legal? It, can it be considered okay, bourbon so if it's under 80? I don't think it could be that low. Yeah. That's what I don't up. understand. Uh, so 
Chris Haynes said that uh, I hit puberty when I was 15. <laughs> that was actually when I was nine, so fuck off, Chris. <laughs> and, uh, so do you, have, you, uh, have you seen a picture of it? Do you have it? Yeah, there's, you can find it on Google. Of what? Old number 15 bourbon. Old number 15 bourbon. Uh, I've never had that. So, Nick, do you have, do you, have you heard about it or do you have a picture of it? What do you have? Just from Google searches. That's all I have. Same thing Old you'll find. There's like three websites that have it for sale right now in Australia. Huh. You just have to wonder that how that's cool. possible. There's a picture of a cowboy with a gun etched into the front of the book. Well, of course. <laughs> yeah. Obviously. Either that or a horse. That's how I get to work. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on, so are they just blatantly uh, breaking the laws and everything else? Breaking the law. I mean, yeah, I mean, you can't be 74 priest. proof. There you go, Michael. That sounds like a, uh, a job for Wade Woodard to go and. <laughs> yeah. Okay, here, I'm going to give away a sample pack. I want, it's one answer. It's easy. It's not easy, but it's one answer. What is my favorite snack to eat after I've been drinking? <laughs> oh, God. It's easy. Fruit by the foot. <laughs> <laughs> Duncan Dunkaroos. <laughs> this is actually it's pretty easy. It's one item. Sausage pizza. Hold the pizza. Goldfish. Pizza pizza. Cheese. Come on, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Max. <laughs> I think everyone in the chat's been drinking. As well. <laughs> I was just thinking the same thing. <laughs> Sushi. Somebody put sushi. Hoop steak. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Y'all can ask other questions while they're trying to figure it out. Oh, there you go, Max Christie's. I like that one. <laughs> Finish it off with some Saz 18. That's the whiskey yeah. that broke suburbia.com, Saz 18. Yeah, it is the whiskey that broke, broke suburbia. suburbia.com. Still to this day, it's the best shit ever. Fantastic. Well, it used to be fantastic. Right. The pre the tank stuff. Right. White Castle. I don't live in the North, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> is there? Dang, White so Castle. angry. There's no White Castle in Georgia, man. Crystal. What do you have, Crystal? Crystal Burgers. Yeah. Crystal Flash. Crystal, but I, I won't go near there since college. Yeah, we have White Castle up here. <laughs> so, so no lie, during Hurricane Irma. I, me and my brother were out driving around, everything shut down, and Taco Bell's line was at least 70 cars deep because they were the only person open. We're like, this is crazy. We drive to try to go to another place, another Taco Bell, probably 15 cars deep. They didn't open for another 45 minutes, and people were lined up like it was Pappy release parties for Taco Bell during the hurricane. I'm like, <laughs> okay, guys, that's did nobody prep for this or it, we kind of all knew it was coming, right? It, it was the biggest line I've ever seen for a Taco Bell in my entire life. Hot brown run. <laughs> it's a Taco Bell. This is, this is insane. We have no idea what you eat here. <laughs> yeah. Get, drop some kind of hand. Carrie, has anyone come close? No, no what, like, what's your group? So I don't feel like giving them my, I'm just kidding. I love you guys. Uh, it's microwavable. Do we so even wait, know so what wait, you're doing? What, what are they getting? What are they getting? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, they'll get, how about just a, um, how about a two ounce sample of Saz 18? Ooh. 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 You should just nice. stop there. <laughs> 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 You've been drinking too much. Don't pause. Don't pause. Pause. <laughs> two ounce sample of Saz 18, if you can figure out my favorite thing to eat. One of, oh, Pizza Pockets. Somebody just got it. Max. Oh, Max. Oh, just oh, Pizza Max. Pockets. Oh. Max. Max ended up getting it anyway. Not, la not last year's though, right? What's that? Not last year's, right? <laughs> yeah, not last year's. Pizza <laughs> Pockets or uh, Pizza Bites are my jam. All right. Well, cool. Figure Max it out. Christy, Which release? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think that's going to wrap it up, fellas. So, yeah. awesome. Thank you again for everybody that joined. Uh, that's all I got. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Thank, thanks, everyone. It was, this is We're still hanging out. I feel like everyone's really riding the wave right now. <laughs> <laughs> for a Monday.
Yeah. You go, I got 4% battery life left. I'm, I'm on like crutches over <laughs> You're here. You're done. You're all right. Enjoy it, guys. All right. Fun. All right. It was fun. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Screw, guys. Screw, awesome. the, Screw the Gators, Blake. <laughs> okay. Right. Hold, on, hold on. Are we putting an official bet on that or not? What What do you want to throw up? Let's put, put sample <laughs> or something. Let's put a sample of uh, – I'll put the Parkers. W- which Parkers? The newest. I'll do a blend of mash bills or the newest or whatever Ooh. you want. That's your favorite? I like blend, blend of mash bills. Blend of mash bills is my favorite. Do blend of mash bills and I'll yeah. give you a pick of uh, – are we going line? Hold on. What's the line? Four right now. Line? Oh, four? Okay. Yeah, I'll yeah. give you the line. Um, all right. Your your pick of stags from the last four years. Ooh. 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 All right. Did you say stag Four, juniors? 2014. <laughs> <laughs> I did not specify. <laughs> You're picking stag juniors from the last four years. <laughs> he Brilliant. says junior really quickly. You got to yeah, listen yeah, yeah. to that. You're picking stag junior. <laughs> All right. It's, it's a on. stagger or the bourbon or stag, right? <laughs> Three cans this year. Okay. You you get a bad shake on it. <laughs> All right. That was the most wow. awkward fucking thing ever. Right. <laughs> That's how we want to close out with an awkward handshake <laughs> over video chat. Fist bump. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right. Uh, Let's see that. Montana girl was in our chat. We had a female watching us. Well, you had your opportunity to go to take a shower, but you did. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> well, yeah. I'm you 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 have have 14, Blake. Yeah. 14? Is that yep. the pick? Yep. 14 is my favorite. Yeah, 2014 is it. It's everybody's favorite. Right. Yeah, everybody everybody Man, those, those were the. I, I honestly stacked up. A lot of bottles of that, and then I was like trading them for random crap, and now I'm like for, for birthday presents. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which one was the low proof one? Was that 13? Was that the 128 proof like for 128? I think. Yeah, and that one grew on me though. 13 was odd because I didn't like it at first, and it really grew on. 14 and 15 were really close in proof. I think one was like 138.1, and one was 138.3. I remember both of those being good too, but. 13 was an oddball. It was like an outlier yeah. in the stag lineup that yeah, tasted different. I think I think 12 was the really low, like 128. And I, I, think, uh, I think we're all just going to, I mean, at least for here in Kentucky, Ryan, should we make a trip down and just hang out with Carrie next month for a Pappy and BTAC release season? Because yeah, we're not going to get shit here. <laughs> it's everywhere. I like it. Hit up hot cat Atlanta. Cat <laughs> Atlanta. on the shelves we'll down. We'll go to Magic City. We'll have a good time here, man. Hell yeah. I'm in. I like it. Let's do it. Business Magic City expense. Varsity. That'd be a good night. We can write that off, can't we, Blake? Counting guy. <laughs> oh, no, absolutely. Who do you write it off to? That's those are operating expenses. That's just what it is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean UPS, the the CEO of UPS is sponsoring the show now. Can't we write some expenses <laughs> off? Man. Exactly. <laughs> Who'd you guys count it? <laughs> <laughs> All right, fellas, I'm out. Bye. See you later. Bye. I gotta go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Hey, uh, Mr. Um, Max Christie hit me up on Facebook. I left my name in there, and we'll send you two ounce sample of Saz 18. All right. Wait. See All you right. guys later. See you later.